in compliance with the open public meeting law. I wish to state that on May 10th, 2024, the notice of this meeting of the Upper Township Committee was posted on the official Township Bulletin Board and the Upper Township website, mailed to the Atlantic City Press, the Ocean City Sentinel Ledger, the Herald Times, and filed with the Township Clerk. Tonight's meeting is being video recorded up until the closed session portion of this meeting and will be available on the Upper Township website. I hereby direct that this announcement be made a part of the minutes of this meeting. Would you please rise and flag I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Out of here, so we actually had a call. But go ahead, uh, <laughs> please uh, call the roll. Mr. Corson is absent. Mrs. Hayes? Present. Mr. Knappen? Present. Mr. Pancos? Here. Mayor Newman? Here. Your uh, pleasure on the minutes. I move that we adopt the April 22nd, 2024 regular and closed session minutes. Second. Would you call the roll, please. Mrs. Hayes? Yes. Mr. Knappen? Yes. Mr. Pancos? Yes. Mayor Newman? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Um, we do have one thing to add to the agenda. Thanks. Two things. What do we have? Sure. For a closed session, a uh, contract negotiation, Delta Dental, okay. and a litigation item. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, we have two things to add for closed session. Uh, one is a contract negotiation with Delta Dental, and also the other is a foreclosure uh, on the Arthur Henry property, and we have um, that our uh, our solicitor asked us to uh, do that, uh, add that. So now uh, we're going to go to reports governing body members. Usually I go last, but I'm going to go first tonight uh, because of a couple of um, items that we have uh, that are pretty important and near and dear to our heart. Uh, as, you, as you may have heard, there is somewhat of a budget issue with the Township uh, Board of Education budget. Uh, to that end, uh, Deputy Mayor Hayes and myself put together a meeting uh, uh, with um, the, the superintendent of schools, Alex Pesolano, as well as the business administrator, Laurie Ryan, our engineer, Ryan, uh, our attorney, Tony Monzo, uh, Gary DeMarzo, and we also had online, we had um, uh, our, we, uh, we had uh, Stephanie Thompson, who is uh, our planning board engineer, but she brought a little bit of special knowledge to this, uh, to this, to what we were, we were, we were doing. Um, one of the, did I miss anybody on the, our oh, our grant writer as well, uh, Todd Noon, our grant writer from Triad Associates, and you'll see a couple things that are going to take place tonight um, to, to attempt to assist them. Now, what, uh, and I'll, I'll turn to Ryan and Gary to Mars over a little bit on a couple things that you talked to me about before with these grants, as well as uh, Gary will sum the meeting up. We went into this meeting looking to see how the township could uh, possibly affect or support the township um, school board uh, with resolving these budget shortfalls. We weren't really looking for to pay them money or anything like that or to add money to their budget. What we were looking for was to how we could, with the township offices be able to assist them with grants, which we'll talk about in a little bit, also assist them with um, uh, any kind of things that the township can provide that we already have in place, uh, possibly recreation programs or something along those lines. Um, it seemed to me that the, so in doing this, we took a look at our budget, uh, which we felt we had a very, very good budget last year that, um, that provided a stable budget for the township. Uh, we checked our surplus. Our surplus has gone up uh, over the past three years uh, from, uh, well, just from this year to next year, from uh, last year to, to, excuse me, from 2022 to 2023, our surplus has gone up over $2.4 million. So we're sitting at $5 million surplus right now, which is, which, and we also paid down debt in this year's budget. So, and added to our surplus. Excuse me, Mayor, just to clarify, we did use some of that surplus to fund our budget this year as well. Yeah, which, which we do every year. Which we do every year. So, at, at uh, 
our, our budget surplus at the end of 2023 sat at $5 million. And we were able to pay down debt uh, and still add, you know, keep our surplus going. Uh, this is a really, really important uh, factor uh, in keeping our township and our taxes stable. It has a lot to do with what's going on at the school board, too, because obviously we don't want to, you know, tax increase over there. And as we say all the time, that uh, and we're, we're looking to avoid the ups and downs. We want to steady, steady as, as we possibly can. But as we all know, we live in very inflationary times. Um, the, the cost of everything is going up from insurance, uh, obviously health care, insurance, uh, personnel costs. Are, are there fuel equipment just it, just going up exponentially the point I'm making is the township is in good shape we are stable we have uh, the ability to bond money when we have a surplus like that it expands our ability to bond uh, without going outside of what the accept, state accepted norms are and am I basically correct in what I'm saying I know I can't get into the details because the details are that's what your job is. So, but in general, just want everybody to know our surplus is in good shape. Continue to add to it. Continue to pay down debt, and uh, we'll go on from there. And I'm going to turn it over to Gary Marzo to sum up. And if he needs to use Ryan or a couple of those grants, that's fine. Or Mr. Monzo, or what we can and can't do on this particular meeting. And, and you're right, Your Honor. And uh, you know, over the past week to, to two weeks, we have been in deep conversation with the state. Uh, we've been beating the drum at the state level uh, this afternoon. The governor and the, not the governor did not sign it, but the state and the assembly both signed uh, S3081. Assembly signed A4161, which is a supplement relief package for the schools. So we're just waiting for the governor to sign that, and that should alleviate some of the issues that the schools have. Some, but not all. Correct. Uh, going back to your surplus, I guess we can kind of talk about the surplus because people say, "Why can't you just use a surplus to pay this?" Uh, one of the one of the uh, things that were that was done or what was lacking was the lack of, of surplus when this administration took over. And so Barbara and I uh, took the advice of our professionals and we grew that surplus to five million dollars. And that surplus uh, benefits on a bond rating which allows us borrowing at lower rates, and it also does what the deputy mayor says, allows us to supplement our tax burden off, this, off the surplus. So surplus is extremely important, and it's been the position of this board to grow that surplus, and we have been growing that surplus. So it, it, what came out of the meeting of the school was is that they are not in a position or we're not in a position to actually make any determination as to what they need. So uh, subscription busing and courtesy busing and um, transportation waivers and consolidation of bus routes and providing the actual numbers of students that are affected all have to go into this calculation to make any determination relative to how this township can help. Because the number was 145 today, might be 90 tomorrow. Four routes might be uh, necessary, and it only might be one route. So in the interim, as the school is gathering all that information, this municipality has took, taken the position that if it's going to be uh, advantageous to build upon the grants that we had prior, so we had a million dollar safe routes to school grant, which goes from the Tuckahoe Inn and wraps all around until the elementary school. Um, interesting enough, the, uh, our planning board engineer, uh, who have these other communities, brought two or three other grants to the forefront for us, including the uh, New Jersey uh, DOT bike grant and sidewalk grant. And these local bikeways and pedestrian grants will supplement what the town already has and what we want, what we're looking to do. So tonight you'll see, uh, after on the consent agenda, I did place uh, resolution 29, which will allow us to uh, take a contract with Remington Avernick, who will present those grants, 
They'll work in conjunction with, uh, with uh, Ryan, our township engineer, as, long, uh, as well as Triad, and it will kind of come together relative to the support that we can give. But I, what, 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 what we did glean out of this is that it's at its infancy stage for, for the township to make any kind of concerted decision. Uh, there is no blank check. Uh, so if we raise taxes and the school doesn't have to raise taxes, well, then we have to raise taxes, right? So there's, there's nothing, someone's raising taxes. And whether it's coming from the state or whether it's coming from the school or, you know, whether it's coming from a grant, it, it, it eventually has to be funded. And we're working to bring that to a conclusion and a clarity to the board so we can make those decisions. But we are very far away from it. And with today's decision from the state house, uh, it, you know, it might be a conversation that's pushed to 2025 now where they can kind of retool and reimagine what they're going to do for the for the school. I think that one of the things that I, I, I do want to bring, and this, this Senate and Assembly bill just got passed and the government governor has not signed it just before this meeting. We just got word about it and I, uh, I spoke to the deputy mayor. 30 seconds before the meeting and said, I think we ought to just keep on going on the same path and we can make decisions as as their funding decisions come along. Once again, we're not looking to distribute cash. What we are looking to do is to supplement whatever they might have with programs that are already in place or people or personnel are already in place in the township. Does that make sense to everybody? It makes sense. <laughs> I hope it makes sense to everybody. And, uh, and we'll continue to, to work on these grants that uh, that we've been working with, we try out and been successful so far with a lot of them. Um, some, of, some of the ones we're looking for, we don't know. We, they're out there. They've already been applied for. We're going to hopefully apply for a couple more tonight. So we're really looking to move forward with uh, a lot of these uh, uh, grant situations. And, and it's, you know, it's kind of like that, that's what we're doing. I just want everybody to know that the township is in a good financial position, the surplus tax rate, bond rate, ability to bond more funds if we had to and that's why we're going to do it and that's the way we're going to we have a great budget this year that funds everything and we'll do whatever we can without hurting our budget to assist the school which we've done in, in the past as well and while i still have the floor um myself and debbie mayor hayes once again uh have been working with um uh we just started tonight or this afternoon, actually, we were reached out to a couple of weeks ago, or a week or so ago, uh, and we had a Zoom meeting today with uh, um, the member of the Coast Guard. We can't go into a whole lot of details, but if anybody remembers the uh, young boy who was uh, injured um, uh, in an accident about two and a half, three weeks ago. It had to be three weeks ago because I was able to report on it here, I think, last time. Um, we're looking to do uh, some sort of fundraising walk or support walk for the family. It is a local family that happens to be involved in the Coast Guard as well. Uh, so that's, those plans are moving forward and uh, we'll, we'll uh, keep you guys informed and, and everybody informed that we possibly can. Now this is um, only coming out of, um, uh, the co this is coming, has to come from the Coast Guard because they're the military operation. And I think the board that you sit on, I think you sit on that Coast Guard community board. No, no. Yeah, okay, I did it one time. But that, that's, we got a couple things going on with this, with a support group that's local, that supports the you need county. military clearance, basically. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah military clearance. <laughs> so, obviously you'll hear some more about that, and that's more of a general report. Of what we're looking to do that sometime this summer, and get some support for a walk or, or some sort of fundraising event for these, for that family. That, and that little boy that's going to have uh, uh, multiple, multiple uh, months of recovery. But once again, the details have to come from the Coast Guard because it's their personnel that we're dealing with. Um, uh, let's see, I don't think I have too much else. Um, so I'm going to turn it over. I'll let Victor go. Thank you so much, Mayor. Um, I, I just have a question for Tony, too. As we sort of navigate all of this, um, I know I'm personally affected in a sense. Courtesy busing affects me. I'm like 1.6 or 7 months in school. So my son's losing buses. We have members up here, our families are active, and on the school board, will, will we be conflicted in any way to kind of make calls on what we can? I don't think so. No, no I, would, I would not say you're conflicted. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's an issue that affects everybody. The fact that you work at school doesn't yeah. impact that. Okay. 
Thank you. Uh, so I will turn to a much lighter note. Uh, usually I, I don't have much to say about animal control, but if anybody's been on the internet in the past few weeks, uh, we went viral uh, for a good reason, uh, which is rare nowadays. Uh, one of our local teams, this has nothing to do with me, I didn't spearhead this, this is totally done by one of our local teachers, uh, Jillian Schoffler, wrote to uh, Dave Portnoy. For those of you that don't know, Dave Portnoy is a very famous internet personality, runs Barstool Sports, has millions of followers online, has recently gotten into animal rescue, mainly pet rescue. He adopted a pit bull named Mrs. Peaches, who's a great follow online. If you don't follow, it's very lighthearted. His videos are very funny. I know he's a controversial guy. Jillian reached out to him, let him know that Beacon was facing some issues. Uh, he's started his, his charity with, with the animal rescue. Um, he recorded a call to her, posted it on his social media. In two days, it got 5.2 million views and 400,000 likes. It's very, very amazing. He put Upper Township on the map. And I don't have an exact number of what he's going to be donating to Beacon, uh, but there will be a check written. So I hear I did speak to Jillian, and she's excited about a number, um, but I don't want to say it because I don't want to say it for sure. But uh, they are going to be getting some money from uh, from David Barstool Sports. Center. So I just wanted to say thank you to him, and uh, it's pretty cool to put our town on the map in such an interesting way. So I wanted to share that with you, with you guys. Good. Yeah, did you guys see the video? I did. Yeah, it is. I went to T-Ball that night, and there was a bunch of, everybody's looking at their phones, and did you see, did you see, oh my gosh, did you post the video, so, pretty cool, pretty cool for us. Very good. That's all Deputy I Mayor Hayes, thank you, Victor. Yes, sir. Um, I just want to circle back to the school stuff for just a minute. Um, I think it's important to talk about how the school ended up in this position, um, so in, which I learned through these meetings and attending their information session that they had at the school. Um, in 2018, Trenton put us into a designation called S2, which basically said that our taxpayers should pay more for our schools. And that's what this is a result of. In 2018, they slated that we were going to lose $4 million in funding. As of this year, we're up to over $6 million loss. Um, so, you know, I don't envy the administrators or the school board or the superintendent or anyone, you know, their position, they're in a very difficult position. So, you know, it's, I'm, I'm glad that we're meeting with them. We're trying to support them however we can. Um, some of the things that we're looking at for recreation. I'll tell you that in th that meeting and in the parents that have stopped me on the street, there are two main issues right now. And courtesy busing is huge, which I understand we're not a walkable town, right? We're not, if, you know, my kids even in eighth grade from Sunset Acres to the middle school, I made them take the bus. I didn't let them ride the bike, you know, because we're just not in that kind of position in our town. So I think our long-term plan with the grants is really, you know, the way we want to look at it. We are, if, if we don't get funding back, through this bill, we are going to have to look at some other solution to ensure that our kids are safe getting from home to school. Um, additionally, is the programs that are not offered in the township. So um, things like field hockey and cross country are not currently offered through our sports programs. Then there's other programs for kids, you know, like the garden club and things that are not sports oriented for those kids who are not athletes and are not interested in those types of things. So our recreation leader and I have already had several conversations about um, how we can quickly get some of those organizations partnered with existing organizations in our community. Um, field hockey is a, a big a hot button right now just because the, the caliber of the program at the high school, if our girls are not starting by sixth grade, they're never going to be able to compete when they get to high school. So um, we are talking to a couple organizations to see if they'll be willing to take them under their umbrella um, for the fall. And there are multiple parents who are looking to help get organized to coach. I will say that I'll plead to the community when we get to that point that their biggest hurdle to get their season off the ground in the fall is going to be finances to pay referees. That's by far, outside of equipment, that's by far the biggest expense that our organizations face on a daily basis. Um, so when I come back and beg and plead for people to help, that'll be what it's about. <laughs> and um, on another topic, we are once again being plagued with issues at the Senior Center. Our uh, air conditioning system on that first heat did not fare well, so we have brought back in the rental units. Um, we are still waiting for a response on the grant application that was supposed to be closed mid-April. Um, they extended it by two weeks. We did reach out um, to LRIG and ask them if they would reimburse us. So if we went ahead and fixed it and they awarded us the grant, would we still get the money? And they said no. So we're sort of in a holding pattern where we can either put the money out and forget the grant, or we can wait two more weeks, see if we get the grant, and 
hopefully that will be the, the path that we're able to take. So uh, for now, the temperature is holding steady at 75, which is where they like it, <coughs> which is where they want it. They don't want it colder than that. Um, and we'll, we'll keep <laughs> plugging away, hold on for two more weeks, and we're slating by the end of June, hopefully we'll have that system replaced and we'll no longer be plagued by these issues. Kim, they should be here the end of this week before we back. Great. The guy's supposed to have a salt for body. Yeah. <laughs> and, and this is the third visit for them in the last two weeks. So I when not we're appreciative of their efforts trying to get it repaired and get it running for us just to patch it one last time before we can replace it. But at the very least we have the backup units and the facility is up and running. That's all I have. Thank you. Miss Shoffler just texted me they got the check. Yeah, right. She didn't say no, no, no. <laughs> they have the check in hand. All so right. we, got, we definitely need to do something for them. Pretty cool. More pictures. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as they say, not to beat a dead horse, uh, I, I just would like to thank again you and uh, Deputy Mayor Hayes uh, for, you know, what's not supposed to be a full-time job is turned into a full-time job for the two of you guys. And uh, as Gary said, the complex uh, matrix that's going on behind the scenes that, that the public don't get to, does not get to see um, the day in and day outs of what you two do. And uh, I think, you know, I think Victor would also agree that, you know, the, the communications that is there behind the scenes with us, at least keeping us updated with what's going on is, um, is great as you guys are out there, you know, fostering these partnerships um, with the school district. So I, I appreciate that uh, very, very much. Um, and from the public work works desk, uh, the crossovers uh, at Seaview uh, got great, got gravel today. So hopefully uh, that'll be completed tomorrow with the fencing. They're going to put the fencing in. Um, I know the Moby bats um, are being mobilized, so they're going to be they're, they're on a list to get put in. Uh, the trash cans for deployment are getting ready to go. That's something I learned out. I didn't realize we took the trash cans away from Stratford during the winter, but uh, so they're getting ready to go back. And uh, it looks like uh, with the heat, this, this hot and this cold weather going back and forth, um, these potholes that might start appearing in the roadways. Um, just just putting a call out to the to the public. Um, if you guys should see any potholes or uh, you know, any conditions of our roads, please feel free to call the administrator. I throw him under the bus. And, uh, and, uh, we'll, we'll, play, yeah, we'll, we'll work on work on getting taking care of those roads. So, uh, it, and it's not only not only uh, township roads, but county and state roads that we can mm -hmm. usually coordinate with the engineer. So. Can I add one more thing? Because yeah. there was one other thing that I did do that fell off the radar. I had a resident reach out to me about the mosquitoes in the township oh, yeah. with all of the standing water and rain that they were being overrun out in Steelman Town. And I just want to thank our superintendent of public works for reaching out to the mosquito, uh, to the, uh, mosquito control commission and getting them out there to spread. So thank you, Craig, for that. He, it was very personal to him. It was. It was. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Thank you, Mark. Yep. Uh, Gary, uh, even though you had a little bit of time, got some more. Right Again, I mean, it's it's like a pinball game, right? I mean, so the, 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 the communication and the ability for the staff to work together, it goes from the clerk's office to the finance and finance to HR and HR over to the public works and back to me. And it just, that's, over the past three weeks now, it's been that particular uh, foot race that we've been, that we've been uh, uh, in the middle of. And I just want to thank the staff the, of the propriety rights, so we're having CME get the certifications to get that system. Nobody wants to touch the system because the, uh, the, 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 what, De Deltac, or what is it called? What's the name of the system? Dyson. Dyson won't give out the propriety rights until CME paid the check, and uh, the, 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 the card swipe system, RBH, didn't want to give that until uh, John spent two, three hours on them, fighting with them to get the passwords, and, uh, you know, this, this, Dynamic continues each day and in the interim community busing and grants and the school issue and, uh, and so I, I just want to thank uh, the staff because it, it is a constant uh, constant uh, mini meeting we have in the, most of the time around this office not, not to take away from you Julian we like your office <laughs> so uh, but uh, that's uh, that's where we're at at this point so uh, the summer staff's coming on board uh, Beacon Rescue got the, uh, the septic tank so we worked with them this, uh, to, to get to the health department to make sure they wouldn't lose their license so we've been on the phone with Ryan uh, D uh, D uh, Dylan and uh, trash cans and 200 gallons of yellow paint and, and signs at Strathmere uh, we got three weeks before Memorial Day um, so 
The 28th is our next stop, right? That's at the next meeting is the 28th? 28th. Uh, I don't know, is that, it's the day after Memorial Day is our next meeting. Yes, that's what it is. Okay, I get it. It's a blur. <laughs> <laughs> How much can you accomplish in yeah. the next 15 <laughs> uh, Joanne. I have nothing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Monza. I just want to update my, uh, the cell tower uh, saga. Uh, <laughs> the structural engineering report should be in next week, um, which will clear the way to take ownership of the tower. There's a few issues we're trying to work out with the uh, carriers. They're getting a little, there's a little bit of a dispute as to who gets what space on the tower. We're trying to work through that. Uh, but the bidding is what it is, and there's really not much we can do about that. I said it's your problem to work out. Uh, so we're, we should be ready to go for the next meeting uh, unless some additional problems pop up. So thank you. Schedule a throwdown. We can race and <laughs> uh, Barbara. Thank you as well. Uh, Ryan, go ahead. I know you got stuff. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a, have a couple to get through today. Um, first one being the paving program. Uh, some good news. Concrete work is substantially complete. Contractor will be out this week to complete grass restoration work around the concrete areas. And then mill and overlay is slated to start early June, subject to weather delays. And I'm expecting them to need a month to accomplish all the mill overlays. So hopefully early July, all the mill and overlays are completed. Um, next one will be Strathmere Stormwater Pump. Um, some more good news, that project is substantially complete. The control panel structures have been installed um, and their contractor is proceeding with concrete asphalt restorations this week as well as electrical work. Uh, they have a walkthrough meeting set up with the pump supplier on the 28th of May. Um, and it's really I have to request a motion for an extension for the project. We gave them until uh, May 17th. It's my understanding that the project is now substantially complete. All the structures are in the ground. And they really just need a couple more weeks to work with Land City Electric to install the service connection and the pump supplier to go through the walkthrough and final setup for the project. So I would recommend that we grant that extension. There won't be any disruption in traffic or anything like that? No, yeah, all the heavy machinery is out of the way. Um, no more excavation will be needed. Um, it's really just a final closeout, essentially waiting for Atlanta City Electric to come with the meter. I'll make that motion. Yeah, yeah no, I'll, I'll second that. Okay. Would you call the roll, please? Mrs. Hayes? Yes. Mr. Knappen? Yes. Mr. Pankos? Yes. Mayor Newman? Yes. Motion carried. And, and potentially, uh, Gary, uh, maybe a uh, phone call. We had a meeting. That's another meeting, Gary, and I went to a uh, phone call to the Lenox City Electric Car contact there. Might get that uh, moved along. Okay. Yes. And then the last one is, uh, as you mentioned earlier, Mr. Mayor, we'll be starting our review of the municipal aid. Um, the type of roadway projects we can proceed with the application before July 1st, along with bikeway grant applications with the Planning Board Engineer. And that, that's all I have for tonight. Very, very good. Thank you very much. Okay, let's uh, go on to uh, the yeah, The consent agenda, all consent agenda items listed below are routine in nature and will be enacted by one motion. If the mayor or any committee member wishes a particular agenda item to be considered separately, it will be removed from the consent agenda and acted on separately. Move we adopt the consent agenda items number one through 21. Second. Would you call the roll, please? Mrs. Hayes? Yes. Mr. Knappen? Yes. Mr. Pankos? Yes. Mayor Newman? Yes. Motion carried. Under ordinances, we have the public hearing and final adoption of ordinance number 7, 2024, an ordinance authorizing sale of lands to wit block 329, lots 1 through 4 and 8, and block 332, lots 26 and 30. Um, Mr. Monzo, could you please uh, start us off before I open it to the public? Sure. Yes, Mayor. This is the uh, second reading of this ordinance. The um, applicants or the, per the individuals uh, requested the vacation, I'm sorry, the, uh, the purchase of this uh, undersized lot, and uh, they paid the, the applicable fees. Uh, the appraisal has come in uh, at $9,800, so uh, they've agreed to buy it for that price, subject to it being put out to auction for any adjoining property owners that want to bid a higher amount. So this ordinance will authorize uh, the sale to them and also the, the um, bidding of the property to adjoining property owners. Okay. Uh, any comments from the Township Committee? 
No. Thank you. I'll open it up to the public. Anybody from the public want to talk about or make a comment on uh, ordinance number seven of 2024? Okay, hearing none, I'll close the public portion and entertain a motion to adopt ordinance number seven of 2024. Move to adopt ordinance number seven of 2024. Second. Thank you. Would you please call the roll? Mrs. Hayes? Yes. Mr. Knappen? Yes. Mr. Pancros? Yes. Mayor Newman? Yes. Motion carried. 23, public hearing and final adoption of ordinance number eight, 2024, and ordinance adding chapter 13, section five, vacation of public street, highway, right of way, or other public place to the Code of Upper Township. Mr. Monzo. Yes, Mayor, this um, ordinance came about uh, through the efforts of the uh, Planning Board in reviewing a prior street vacation ordinance request. And uh, with Mr. DeMarzo's assistance, um, a, a procedure was developed and it now being is memorial it's now being memorialized in this ordinance that basically allows the vacation to take place but puts certain requirements on the applicant uh, by getting a meets and bounds description of the property, by notifying adjoining property owners, uh, and then there's a process whereby before the ordinance gets adopted, the, the municipality sends out notice to properties within 200 feet so they can come in and determine whether they want to oppose, object, say something about the ordinance to make sure it has no impact on them and all the costs associated with this, re this are being paid by the applicant. So there's no cost to the township in doing this. And I think it's a good process that, that the committee does have the ability to waive some of these requirements for maybe some minor um, slivers of, of, of streets that don't affect really anybody but maybe one or two properties. So you don't want to have to go through this lengthy process for every single one. But I think this sets the basis for, for what you need to do with the ability to restructure it on, on a case-by-case -case basis. Anybody from the Township Committee? No. Okay, I'll open it up Ordinance to the public. Ordinance number 8 of 2024. Anybody who would like to comment on that? Hearing none, seeing none, I'll close the public portion of that and entertain a motion to adopt Ordinance number 8 of 2024. Motion to adopt ordinance number 8 of 2024. Second. Would you call the roll, please? Mrs. Hayes? Yes. Mr. Knappen? Yes. Mr. Pankos? Yes. Mayor Newman? Yes. Motion carried. Under new business, we have amendment to performance guarantee requirements. Uh, this concerns Barbara, right? Is that? No, it's, it's uh, Ryan and I. Oh, Ryan and I was yeah. working on to, uh, to clean yes. up an ordinance requirement. I'll take it. So essentially, our performance guarantee ordinance section has not been updated since 2008. Uh, MLUL, Municipal Land Use Law, was updated in 2018 uh, to change the requirements for performance guarantees. Essentially, we are no longer required or allowed um, to have a private developer bond for private improvements. So really, performance guarantees are essentially just for improvements that will be uh, dedicated to the township. Um, so. I think it makes sense to update the ordinance to reflect the current MLU so, standards. So uh, we're going to go ahead and direct you guys to put that together. Correct. Just to add to that, right of way improvements and, and buffering improvements can still be bonded. It's, yeah. it's all the other improvements they cannot. What was the date on that? 2018. 2018. It was up, MLUL was oh, updated. The ordinance has been updated 2008. 2008. Yeah. Yeah. And the law changed in 2018. Yes. Right. Yeah. So I wanted to bring it to the, to the board's uh, attention that uh, these two gentlemen will be working together uh, to develop that ordinance to bring that back to a uh, You should probably have it for next meeting without too much of a problem. Not a problem at all. That's what he says now, man. Until we present more things on uh, the right. That's him. Not a problem for Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. The next one we have is advertisement in Strathmere Volunteer Fire Company publication. Okay, this has been a tradition over the years that the uh, we have supported uh, the um, individual fire companies. Uh, Strathmere is holding their 100th anniversary of their fire company in July, it's the end of July, on the exact date, on the later dates in July, uh, and. Uh, uh, which brings to mind, Gary, we got to remember about that Dill thing. Yes. On this, whatever this date is. I don't think they'll conflict because this 
this the one thing will be in the morning and I think this will be most of the day. Uh, but I'd like your recommendation and make a motion that we, uh, that the Township Committee take a generic full page ad out um, uh, in the amount of $300 to, uh, to the Strathmere Volunteer Fire Company. Did you make the motion? Yes, I did. Second. Would you call the roll, please? Mrs. Hayes? Yes. Mr. Knappen? Yes. Mr. Pankos? Yes. Mayor Newman? Yes. Motion carried. 26, Historical Preservation Society of Upper Township requests the use of the Gandhi Farm for their annual Strawberry Festival on May 25th, 2024. Rain date, May 26. Motion no Second. Who did you call the roll, please? Mrs. Hayes? Yes. Mr. Knappen? Yes. Mr. Pankos? Yes. Mayor Newman? Yes. Motion carried. Uh, your pleasure on the bills. I hereby move that all claims submitted for payment at this meeting be approved and that appropriate in full in the minutes of this meeting. Second. Did you call the roll, please? Mrs. Hayes? Yes. Mr. Knappen? Yes. Mr. Pankos? Yes. Mayor Newman? Yes. Motion carried. Uh, at this time, we'll open the meeting up to the public. Would anybody like to comment to the Township Committee? Um, and uh, we'll keep your comments. Uh, just approach the microphone and give your uh, name and address, please. Not specific, but your town that you live in. Anybody at all? I know you're looking like you want to talk, so. She does. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't seen her in a couple months. Yeah. <laughs> How was vacation? <laughs> Everything's doing great. It's great to be back. <laughs> How's grandma life? Oh my gosh, I'm loving, loving being it. a grandmother. Awesome. Uh, however young I may be to be a grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great. And that's really what has kept me um, busy and, and not being able to attend. But anyway, in all seriousness, uh, you all know how much I really appreciate all the work that's going on in, in Strathmere, and I wanted to call out specifically the support you're providing to our pollinator garden committee, um, that they do have a multi-year approach to you know, uh, pollinator garden implementation in Strathmere, and we hope to have that be a pilot that we can then bring to Upper Township, but you know, the, the support you're giving for that project is, we really, really do appreciate it. That's a no-brainer, that's a great project. Thank you for bringing it to us. Wow. And we have more to come. We are looking, and we've talked a little bit, and I think um, uh, Sue Willard's here. She's the president of our playground committee. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be talking with you a little bit more about you know, what you envision for not only Strathmere playground, but you know, in general, we have some thoughts that you know, we'd like to share with you that's and cool. get your ideas and how we can support your work and you can support ours. Absolutely, looking forward to it. And then, you know, again, as the beach season approaches and a lot of attention comes, you know, to Strathmere for a lot of reasons, I want to thank um, Craig Reeves here for all the work that the public works guys do. I mean, it's really critical. Nobody thinks that, you know, the trash collection is terribly glamorous until it's not, and then it becomes an absolute disaster. And, you know, not, it's not the only thing his guys do, but they keep the beaches clean and they're always very responsive for things and I just want to express my thanks to you and your team. And then I, want, I did hear the Moby mats and I know that's been something <laughs> we've, been, we've been very worried about, you know, for those folks who have difficulties, you know, getting to the beach. And then the last thing I want to say is um, the SIA is talking about uh, what we're going to do to support the lifeguards. And so I just wanted to you know, make you aware of that and, and uh, give you more information as things firm up, some ideas that we might want to do. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Did I introduce myself? Hi, I'm Sue Willard, 201 Bayview. Um, thank you again for all the stuff that's coming on. And I have been to these meetings several times, and I, I see that you acknowledge certain groups, and I think that that's really important. Last week was Nurses Week. If there's something that this committee could do to just put a public acknowledgement of all the hard work that nurses do, can I understand well, that you're as well? <laughs> but um, we're often the unsung here, so I think it's uh, if you guys could do something and just acknowledge it, that would be really great. Thank you. Anybody else from the public? Okay, hearing none, I will close the public portion and entertain a motion to go into closed session. 
Uh, Committeeman Pantos, you can do your thing. I hereby move that a resolution be incorporated into the minutes authorizing the Township Committee to enter into an executive session for the following matters pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act. Number one, contract negotiation triad grant consultant services. Number two, contract negotiation coastal EMTC. Number three, contract negotiation shared services agreement for municipal court services. Number four, contract negotiation Remington and Vernick engineers. Number five, potential litigation affordable housing. Number six, litigation Hemby versus Upper Township. Number seven, personnel. We have two add-ons tonight. Number eight, uh, contract negotiation for Delta Dental. And number nine, litigation Henry versus Richards. I also include in my motion the estimated time and the circumstances under which the discussion conducted in closed session can be disclosed to the public as follows. It is anticipated that the matters discussed in closed session may be disclosed to the public upon a determination of the Township Committee that the public interest will no longer be served by such confidentiality. B, with respect to employment and personnel matters, such discussion will be made public if and when formal action is taken or when the individuals involved consent that it can be made public. C, with respect to contract negotiations, such matters will be made public when negotiations have ceased and there is no longer a reason for confidentiality. D, with respect to litigation matters, such discussions will be made public when litigation is complete and the applicable appeal period has expired. Second. Would you call the roll, please? Mrs. Hayes? Yes. Mr. Knappen? Yes. Mr. Pankos? Yes. Mayor Newman? Yes. Motion carried. I will take five. So we'll